Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Good morning, family. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whenever you're watching this, I am so grateful to be able to share with you today. Of course, I'm your pastor, R.C. Blakes, Jr. Those of you that are part of New Home Family Worship Center in whatever location you're in, or those of you that are connected by way of the cyber church community, I am your pastor, and I am so excited to be able to share the word of God with you today. Now, there's something that has just really been on my heart. You know, I've been in this mode where I'm just really exploring the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's system for his children, his people to operate in the earth. And while in the earth, get heaven-like results. That's the kingdom of God in a nutshell. God's people commit to God's way of living. And as a result, as a consequence, God endorses his people. He favors his people and his people live from a heavenly supply. So it doesn't, does not matter what's going on in the earth. God's people can always rise Isaac sowed in a land full of famine, the Bible says, and in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold return. What was that? It was the kingdom of God. And so as I, as I am digging into this and studying, studying this and, you know, bringing this revelation or these truths to you, um, there's something that's just been ringing in my spirit I guess it's a prophetic utterance for you to hear. And that is the spirit of God is saying it's time to level up. You've been you've been living according to the world's system too long. It's time to level up. Um, I think this this terminology, uh, you know, level up, it comes from the arcade era. You know, when I was a kid, we would go to arcades and we would play games on the machines. And um, there there was this particular game, Super Mario, uh, where, you know, the more mushrooms you gathered, uh, you, you, you leveled up, you gained additional lives. And we would all brag about what level we're on, you know what I'm saying? And everybody, all of the kids were striving to level up after school in the arcade. We were striving to level up. What level are you on? What level am I on? What level is she on, he on? And that same mentality um, has to be a part of us in the kingdom of God because even in the world, the world is, is you know, this is a catchphrase in the world now level up, which means to what? To improve yourself. It means to max out your abilities. It means to actualize. It means to increase something, you know. uh, it, it, It means to progress to the next level. I'm afraid that there are too many believers that are stuck on levels that are far beneath the Creator's intention for you. And there there are very few prophetic voices in the earth that are saying to us, it's time to level up. Well, leveling up is not, it's not a world or a worldly concept. It is a kingdom concept. It is actually God's plan for his children that we always what? Level up, level up, level up. God always wants us to level up. Level up, level up, level up. 
not not to sit complacently and to stagnate if you're still here there's another level for you to achieve and you got to stop copping out with things like your age or your sex or your race you know or your educational background or lack thereof god intends for you to level up and i'm speaking to to you today from a pastoral apostolic and prophetic vantage point saying to you that the grace for you to level up to move to the next level to to go higher than you've gone that grace is upon you right now. My God, my God, I feel it. That grace for you to level up is upon you right now. I want to talk today specifically about three things to know that you need to understand or know about leveling up. But let's look into the scriptures first. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 in the Amplified, it says this, and we all with unveiled face continually, seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more. Glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So God intends for us to, to constantly level up. And when you start talking about the kingdom of God, you're talking about, um, you know, God's order for morality, God's order for emotional stability, God's order for uh, wealth, you know, God's order for spirituality. In all of these facets of life, we should all be what moving from glory to glory, leveling up. You know, you should not be in the same place this year that you were in last year. I thank God that as I look over my life, I can see where, you know, I'm constantly leveling up. And, and here's the thing about leveling up. And I don't mean to just go on a rant, but I think you need to hear this. Um, it's like when you're on level six, you're, you're, you're praying to get to level seven. And it's like, you know, if I can just make it to level seven, wow, what an accomplishment. And then when you get to level seven, it's like your vision expands and you can, you, you can see level eight clearly now. So my point is leveling up is a continual process in life. You move from glory to glory. You, you move from one level of faith to another level of faith. You know, um, you move from one degree of glory on your marriage and your family to the next degree, you know, in your ministry, in your business, in your money. You just continue. You, you continue to level up. But there's some things that I need you to understand. The kingdom of God. This is what I'm trying to drill in before I get into these three things. The kingdom of God endorses leveling up. It's not worldly necessarily. There are some saints who think that, you know, the blessing is only money. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. There, there are things about the blessing that far exceed, transcend money, but money is a part of it. It is. But money alone is not does not indicate the blessing and you can level up in your money and be, uh, you know, below average in your health, below average in your family, in your marriage, in your mind, in your mental, in your spiritual. Well, what kind of life is that? The kingdom of God endorses leveling up. Don't ever kick against that. You know, I know that some of you, uh, some of us. Um, cry out against some of this imbalance in terms of uh, prosperity, the prosperity message. But don't ever, you know, take a person's out of balance approach to the subject and throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, well, you know, that prosperity thing. I don't want that. What do you mean you don't want that? You need that. That is what your heavenly father has provided for you along with all of the other things because leveling up 
is in, it's a kingdom agenda. And the Bible says in Psalms 115 and 14, the Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. Sounds like leveling up to me more and more. You know, I look at my father and how my father took and he leveled up, leveled up. He leveled up. You know, he started at the bottom. Now, now he's here. And he got me and my brother along with him. My father goes on to heaven and my brother and I step into that same grace and we leveling up. Come on, somebody. And now our children are on a level that is just unbelievable. You know, the conversations that we have, the things that they're doing, the things that they're going to do, that the world's going to see them do, things that I'm accomplishing in my 50s, my kids are going to accomplish a lot sooner. Because every generation, it's, it's kingdom endorsed, is leveling up. God says, I shall increase you more and more, you and your children. So leveling up has to become a mindset that runs through your lineage. You know, I'm teaching my children and my grandchildren, man, aim for the moon. And if you land upon the stars, you're still on higher ground. And landing on the stars is not a failure. It's progress because once you get on the stars, you're yet closer to the moon. Aim again and continue to what? Level up. But there are three things I want to share with you about this whole kingdom agenda of your leveling up. The first thing I want to say to you is that you have to be you have to be prepared to pay the price. Every level comes with a price. Every level comes with a price. You know, people look at others and become jealous of others, envious of others, not understanding the price that those people paid. Or maybe you don't get jealous, but you just, you know, you just desire to have it and you're, you're, you're praying for it and you're asking for it, not understanding the price tag that goes along with it. One of my... Um, one of my spiritual sons said to me last Sunday, he said, I love that suit you have on. He says, where did you get it? I want to buy one. I said, well, I don't know. This might not be your level right now, you know, but I tell you what, I'll pick you up tomorrow. This is his first suit. I'll pick you up tomorrow and I'll bring you somewhere and I'm going to hook you up tomorrow. But this right here, you, you there's there's some stages you got to go through through before you start trying to put this on. I said, Google it. I gave him the brand. I said, Google it. You'll understand what I'm saying. Because there, there, there's always a price to every level. You, many times you, you see people and you want what people have, but do you want to pay the price people pay? People, uh, well, let me, let me leave that alone. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48, it says, but he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Read the full context about the stewards. For unto whomsoever, here it is, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. There is a price that comes with leveling up. Every level has a price to pay. Every level has a price to pay. So you're, you're looking at someone else and you're saying, that's what I want. Well, do your research and investigate the price. Don't just sit there desiring what another person has. Ask some questions about what did it cost for them to be where they are, to be who they are. Everybody wants to be you know, a T.D. Jakes until you wake up and understand, <laughs> understand that every level has a price. You know, when you understand that every level has a price, you, you become content with who God has ordained you to be. You know, where can T.D. Jakes go in the world and have any, uh, has the word said, anonymity? Anonymity? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to be deep, use big words. Where can he go in other words and people not know him? Nowhere, nowhere in the world. That's a price. That's a price. When you can't go anywhere and people not know you, you can't go anywhere and not have to, you know, engage people in a loving way. 
because they love you. And even though they love you, you're human and sometimes you're not feeling well. Sometimes you just want a private moment. Where can T.D. Jakes go in the world and get that? So there's a price. Now, first part of this price that comes along with leveling up is that it involves a new mindset. It's going to cost you a new mindset. You're going to have to break out of this old mindset that you're so familiar with, this old mindset that has become normal to you. You know, for me to move from level to level, well, actually for Lisa and I to move from level to level, we have to shift mindsets. Our mindset has to grow really every six months. We have to be, we have to be in a new mindset. Sometimes we don't, you know, sometimes we don't shift the mindset as fast and we can see where the progress matches the mindset. But see, if, if you want to level up on schedule, it's going to cost you a new mindset. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to unlearn some of the stuff that you've been taught all of your life. And you're going to have to adopt a new mindset that um, identifies with where you're going. I like what the Bible says of Caleb in Numbers 14 and 24. It says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit or mindset with him and have followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein to he went and his seed shall possess it. Remember, God always wants you and the family to level up. But God says of Caleb, as opposed to all of the other original Hebrews that came out of Egypt, Caleb is going to inherit the land because he had a different, he had a different mindset. His mindset matches uh, Canaan. The rest of you all are going to have to die off and we'll raise your children up. It's going to cost you a new mindset. You can't level up with the same old mindset because your life will never outrun your mindset. Your life will never rise above your mindset. And there are some of you who are stuck, you know, on struggle. You're stuck on the bottom in terms of your internal, your mental. And you're wondering why your life does not move. It's because leveling up is going to cost you a new mindset. Letter B, it will require being self-motivated. It's going to cost you self-motivation. You're going to have to stop running around here talking about how your daddy wasn't there. And I get that. You know, I had a great father, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I, you know, I get it. I had a great one. I had I had the very best father in the world. But guess what? He didn't have one. Yet he was the best father in the world of my brother and I. But there was a certain point. He said, well, you know, I, I didn't have I didn't have the kind of paternal support that I needed. Uh, but I'm leveling up. I'm shifting my mindset. And I'm going to be my own motivator. He didn't have a cheerleading section. Daddy believed in himself. <laughs> Come on now. I, I would listen to my father talk himself up, man, when nobody else was there to talk him up. Dad would, would build himself because leveling up is going to require you to be self-motivated. Stop whining about who you don't have, who not with you, who not helping you. I ain't got no support. Church, church folk don't support me. Family don't support me. Man, get over it. Get over it. You got to level up and to level up means that it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you being self motivated. What happened when David's men all turned on him and wanted to kill him? Listen to what the Bible says in first Samuel 30 and six. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Leveling up is going to require you to be self-motivated. David encouraged himself in the Lord and then went and got the women and the children back from the enemy. And the same men that wanted to kill him because David was self-motivated, they followed him back into battle. Because leveling up will require you to be self-motivated. And then let us see, it will demand that you stay focused. That's the price of leveling up. A new mindset 
It's going to cost you a new mindset. It's going to cost you self-motivation and it's going to cost you focus. You're going to have to stay on task. You can't be distracted. Bouncing from this to that, you know, in and out of this and out and in and into that. Come on now. If you're going to truly level up on your job, in your ministry, in your business, I want you all to hear me. You're going to have to stay focused. Stop looking at all of the stuff. Stop looking around so much that you can't see. Vision is your capacity to see when your eyes are closed and you got to see it and you, you got to stay focused on the thing that God has put before you. What has God put before you? Where is your focus? Have you been all over the place? If you're going to level up, it's going to cost you focus. James chapter one, verses six through eight says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man, a man that is not focused is unstable in all his ways. So that's the price. At least that's a part of the price. A new mindset, you know, um, a, a self-motivation, a, a, a focus, a, an inner focus that, you know, nothing moves you, nothing sways you. Now, number two, number two. So there's you got to be willing to pay the price. You got to be ready to pay the price. And then number two, you have to be prepared to face the enemies, the enemies rather. Next level, your next level is always preoccupied by your giants. You see, every one of us has a tailor-made or a tailor-made giant or a tailor-made set of giants. Giants represent the obstacles that stand between you where you are and where God is bringing you. You will always meet a giant at the entrance to every next level. And some of you all are there now where <laughs> glory to God, you know, you, you, you about ready to step into your next level. And there that giant is standing there at the gate waiting to meet you like like the giants met the children of Israel when they got to the promised land. They came out of Egypt, came all the way through the wilderness, got to that promised land, went to spy it out. And voila, they discovered that giants were in the land of promise. There were two things there, at least grapes and giants. Biggest grapes they ever saw. But giants were in there eating them. There was honey and giants and they had to face their enemies. There's there are enemies that are standing between you and your next level. It, it's found there in Numbers 13 verses 27 through 33. And it says, and they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong and dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell uh, by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. This was that new mindset that Caleb had. He says, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. You're going to have to face the enemies that are standing between you and your next level. What are some of those enemies that some of you, what are some of those giants or those enemies that some of you are going to have to face? Self-doubt. 
Self-doubt, you, you, you keep talking about you're praying about it. You ain't praying about it. You're doubting yourself, so you're procrastinating. You haven't pulled the trigger. You were supposed to pull the trigger on this thing in 2020. Now we're going into 2022, but because you don't believe in yourself, you keep on making excuses as to why you're not moving on it. That's, an, that's a giant. That's an enemy that you're going to have to face before you level up. In Joshua 1 and 7, listen to what God says to him. Only be thou strong and very courageous. What is courage? Believe in yourself. Even when you're afraid, there are two that you have to believe in. You have to believe in God and you have to believe in yourself. Be courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. What, what is another enemy that you're going to have to face uh, before you enter into your next level? Separation anxiety. The mere idea of going to the next level means that you're leaving this one. And let me let you in on something. You can't bring everybody that's on this level with you because everybody doesn't want to go. And, and, you know, you, 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 you're going to have to face this sooner or later for you to for you to level up and go to the next level where God is calling you to go. You're going to have to leave some people. I didn't say abandon anyone. I said you're going to have to leave some people on the level they're comfortable on. You're either going to you're either going to um, reject the next level that God has for you and deprive yourself of actualization and stay stuck on a level that you've outgrown mentally and spiritually, or you're going to just separate and move to the next level and understand that you can move to the next level and still love the people that you left on the last level. You can visit from time to time. Eagles can come down and visit the light pole, but they can't live there. They have to return, you know, to higher heights. So you, one of the enemies, another of the enemies you're going to have to face is separation anxiety. Am I am I able to leave all the folk that I'm from? That, that was, you know, Abram's problem. He didn't want to leave Lot. And what did Lot do? He caused him all kinds of problems, got him into wars, had him giving up half his stuff and all this kind of thing. If you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 and 17, it says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Sometimes you're so busy trying to hold on to people, you're missing God. God says you got to let some of that stuff go. And grab hold of me and I'm going to receive you. And then let us see. Let us see. You're going to have to. You're going to have to. In terms of facing your enemies, you got to overcome the enemy of self, the enemy of self doubt, the enemy of separation anxiety. And then you're going to have to overcome the comfort zone enemy. You're going to have to leave that place that you're so comfortable. Oh, my God. I just got comfortable here. I, I know this level so well. I can do it with my eyes closed. And now you're calling me to go to the next level. I got to learn all over again. Yes, you have to learn all over again. And then number three, and finally, three things you need to understand about leveling up. What was the first thing I told you? You're going to have to, you're going to have to learn that you're going to have to pay. There's a price to be paid for leveling up. Uh, number two, we said that uh, there is there is uh, there are enemies rather that you're going to have to face down in terms of leveling up. And then the third thing you got to understand about leveling up is that you're going to have to learn the language of the next level. You can't you can't level up with with the last level's language. <laughs> You cannot level up with the last level's language. There's a way you're going to have to talk on the next level that you're going to have to learn from the people who are on that level. 
Next level living requires a shift in language. How you speak, what you say, when you say it, how you say it. You're going to have to learn the language of the next level. Now, let me give, let me give you A, B points here. Letter A, you're going to have to learn the language of faith. You cannot level up with that doubt and unbelief language. You're going to have to learn the language of faith. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You're going to have to learn to speak the mind of God. You're going to have to learn to ignore like Abram ignored what he saw in the natural and he held on to what God said. And that's what he spoke. You're going to have to learn to speak the language of faith. Not all of this doubt and unbelief, but faith. Whatever God says, say that. Nothing else. I don't care what you're thinking. Shut your mouth up. You don't breathe life into it until you open your mouth. But speak the language of faith. Recently, Lisa was in a situation where she sowed a seed and and uh, there was a prophetic word given uh, over the seed, I wasn't there, and it was it was you know a phenomenal, amazing prophetic word, great thing that the person was prophesying. But I was like, I don't, you know I don't even want that. I said, but you know if um, if God has you know has that in the plan for me, I receive in Jesus' name. But I'm not ambitious, but I receive because you got to learn to agree with God. Because sometimes God wants some stuff for you that you can't even see for yourself right now. And when, when, when you start hearing people speaking prophetically, agree with that. Speak the language of faith and then let it be. Learning the language of the next level is the language of faith. Even in the world, they talk faith. They don't talk doubt and unbelief. Movers and shakers, one percenters, two percenters, ten percenters, they talk faith. They don't talk, talk doubt and unbelief. Even people that don't don't necessarily believe in God, they don't talk doubt. They don't talk. They, they talk faith. Let her be. You got to speak the language of abundance. You got to lose this mindset of scarcity, that things are running out, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, I, I better try to hold on to what I got. I got to uh, because if things are running out, man, the kingdom of God never runs out. And as long as you're speaking the language of abundance, that heaven, that kingdom, that heavenly system is going to supply you. <laughs> My God, that stuff is going to flow, man. You're going to see stuff delivered to your door that your neighbors are going to be amazed at. But you got to speak the language of abundance. Ain't no lack. There's no lack. Not for me. Not in my life, because I don't live by the White House, my daddy would say. I live by the lighthouse. I don't live from the headlines of men. I live from the lifeline of God, the word of God. And let me show this to you. In John chapter 6, verses 5 through 12, one of my favorite texts, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to test him. For Jesus knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not enough for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now, there wasn't much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto the, his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. They went from not enough in the natural, come on now to having everybody filled and then having more than enough 
left over. But notice the language. Jesus asked, but Jesus already knew what he would do. It ain't enough. That was that was that was not the language of the next level. That was not kingdom language. Jesus said, just give me the stuff here. And he he started speaking the language of abundance. He started speaking the language of the kingdom. He lifted it up and he gave thanks for not enough. The two fish and the five loaves. And when he came down with it, because he was speaking the language, he was thankful as if it was more than enough. He started distributing it and it kept flowing until everybody was filled. And then there were uh, baskets left over. So if you're going to move to the next level, you're going to have to speak the language of faith. And you're going to have to speak the language of abundance. Let me hear you say it right now. There's more than enough for me. Come on, say it. There's more than enough for me because God is calling you to level up, level up, level up. We here at RC Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. This time with us today. RC and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by RC Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by RC. You may find all books written by RC and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at RC Blakes Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.